morning, Angie. How are you? Hi, everybody, and you're very welcome to this morning's live all about kitchens. So uh, this is a topic that we literally have been inundated uh, with questions about, and I know so many of you have been looking forward to this. So um, I'm delighted that today I've invited Ed Ratkin from Ratkin and Hick to join me. So Ed has a wealth of experience in kitchen design and he's going to be sharing all of his tips and advice to help you guys set yourself up for success when you're tackling this kind of project. Now, um, it was amazing actually, you might remember some of you uh, that we did a survey a couple of weeks ago just to find out how people were using their homes and if things had changed since lockdown and over the last couple of months. And what was amazing was that just under half of you said um, that you were planning a kitchen renovation project since lockdown. So just incredible. And I can completely understand because, you know, even myself and, and the family have been spending so much more time in the kitchen. So this really is one area of the home that is so worth investing in because it will, if done properly, add such value um, to your day-to-day -day life and to your home. So a really, really worthwhile investment, but super important to get it right. Um, and also just to say as well that um, for many people, these kitchens form part of an open plan living space. So, you know, the design then has to integrate with the living area. You need to have um, plenty of storage. You know, you need to just think about how it's all going to interconnect. And just to say that we have a guide to open plan living, which covers an awful lot of these topics. So if your kitchen um, is part of an open plan space, really worth taking a look at that ebook. I've popped the link in our bio and you can download it completely free from the resources section in our website. So do make sure that after this um, you take a little look. OK, so um, I will invite Ed now to join. Here we go. Morning, Ed. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good, good. I'm just going to see if I the volume up. There we go. Fantastic. Brilliant. Well, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you for your advice. <laughs> No, it's great to have you this morning. And as I was saying in the intro, just so many people asking uh, for us to cover this particular topic because so many people planning kitchen refurbs. I'm sure you guys are super busy now over the last couple of months, um, but it's such an important part of the home. So wonderful to have you here this morning. Thanks so much. It's great. And yeah, it's been really busy. It's been, um, it's been quite exciting the last uh, couple of months, especially not knowing what we were going to be coming back to after the lockdown. But no, I know. Really, really and uh, yeah, it's great that people are kind of, I suppose, you know, happy to go ahead with projects like this. You know, it's a mm -hmm. big undertaking. Mm -hmm. but yeah, a lot of people have been looking at the house differently since they've been at home. So, yeah, it's good. Lots of people with lots of great ideas. Yeah, no, it's wonderful. And it is such a, like I was saying, it's such a worthwhile uh, investment. So, so important to get it right because it can dramatically enhance your quality of life, you know. So, mm -hmm. um, it, it's really important to give it the, the care, consideration and the time to get it right. And I think from, from our perspective, often that, that's something we see as an issue. You know, people tend to focus on other things and think, oh, should the kitchen be one of the last things in? We can tackle it then, but really, the earlier you start the project, the better. So, it's much better to consider it from from very early on. Like we would have a lot of people, as you know, that would be talking to us before a brick is even laid, and mm -hmm. it's great to get the opportunity to talk to people because you know you can look at the position of windows, you can look at the position sure. of walls, you can yeah. sort of see, you know, is there something else that we can add value to in the space. Like a small little movement of the window can make a big, big difference as to what you might fit in along a back run of a wall of cabinetry, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. Like every, yeah, exactly. Every hundred mil makes a massive difference, doesn't it? So no, that, that's, mm -hmm. that's so true. Brilliant. So Ed, from your perspective then, I guess a lot of people watching this morning now are planning, uh, planning on starting. So what's your advice for somebody who's at the very early stages of uh, a kitchen project? Um... So uh, for us, I think, and I think a lot of people are the same, I think it's important to really think ahead. What, what, mm -hmm. What's important to you in a kitchen? 
What yeah. stuff currently doesn't work for you in, mm -hmm. in your kitchen? Mm -hmm. And start to look around at different appliances, different things that you want to fit in. Because things like that are going to dictate quite a lot of the layout. Like if you want to go for a big aga or if you want to go for eye level ovens, that's a, that you des start the design process completely different for those. Um, mm -hmm. If you want to have a walk-in pantry in your kitchen, it's, mm -hmm. fancy thing, but it's actually a really good use of space. And you know, if you're doing an extension, it's quite easy to wiggle the rooms around that you can allow for spaces like that. So it depends mm -hmm. on what exactly is important to you. Everybody's quite different. You know, some people stay at home moms, they, they enjoy cooking, they cook a lot with the kids. That means, you know, big island units really helpful for them. They can spread out and can, kids can be up helping. Mm -hmm. Other families would be, you know, parents are working. So there's a different um, different emphasis on what the kitchen needs to be. So I think mm -hmm. it's also good to to talk to the professionals. Like your architect is obviously going to be your first port of call with them with an extension. And then if if you can get around to start looking at kitchen companies is talking to them about what what's new on the market. We find people who are say replacing a kitchen that you know, what they did the last time around is very different mm -hmm. to this time around. So sure. it's like, yeah. new appliance that's going to suit them? Is there a new appliance which is going to be, um, that's going to suit their family and their, their type of cooking? Mm -hmm. So you can, be quite, you can be quite specific about what you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. And we um, think if the right professionals will help you get there. Yeah, definitely. And there is, you know, there's been such advances, uh, even in the last uh, five years you know with kitchens so uh, from kind of the internals and, and streamlining even at quite a small kitchen you know you can get absolute maximize your storage and things like that and then you're dead right the appliances as well like we spoke to um, Cal about that a couple of weeks ago and it's fascinating you know the advances in appliances but again it's planning all that stuff early because there may be knock-ons down the down the line if you know you're trying to put in some of the the more um specialist appliances that, that might need to be plumbed in or whatever so yeah really really important um, yeah that's the thing important you mentioned earlier on about coming to it at the right time people that do come to you two months before they are planning on moving in quite often you look at the space differently and you, your plumbing is in the wrong location or you need to move things to fit so you're you, then you're immediately on a compromise so sure. It's yeah. hard to plan well in advance and start start looking at things from a very mm -hmm. early stage. It'll help with your building processes. You know yourself, making changes on building pro programs, it always delays things and costs yeah. more money. So Not a good idea. Yeah. 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 yeah, definitely. And another thing that we see as well is people don't um, realize that the floor has to completely go down first. So that sequencing, you know, and yeah. like some of the awful things I've heard is is people being told, oh, no, sure, we can put the floor in after. You really shouldn't do that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, just having those things lined up and understanding the building program is, is really important, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think there's there's a process to every project, you know, and the kitchen mm -hmm. is a piece of furniture at the end of the day and it should go in at the right stage. It's mm -hmm. like anything you want to going in too early, you don't want to going in too late. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Are... Brilliant. And then I guess the, the layout of the kitchen, Ed, you know, so we have our preference. Like I, I like quite a contemporary layout. I, I love a linear kitchen, you know, where it's quite just a linear run and things like that. And I guess lots of people will have heard of the the, the kitchen triangle. But what, from, from your perspective, if you're advising somebody on a layout to keep it really efficient and work well, what do you suggest? Well, I'd agree with you on the linear design. Mm -hmm. Personally, mm -hmm. I think it's always going to work better. So um, like we're lucky that a lot of the projects that we work on would have space for island units. And mm -hmm. island units and prep space and social space. So uh, for me, there's a few different things that are important. Larger presses, be it contemporary or traditional style, are uh, almost a must in a kitchen because there's such yeah. a valuable space. Yeah. You've got yeah. you know, place you know, a meter to 1.2 meters of storage, mm -hmm. but it probably takes up about a third of a traditional old kitchen layout. Yeah. You know, it also negates the need for, you know, storing food in wall units or mm -hmm. base presses that people 
used to do. So it mm -hmm. makes it easier to function. It can be a space to keep a coffee machine or a small appliance as well. So it can take a few things off the counter. Because we all like the idea of taking, you know, having as much stuff hidden away now. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, you mentioned earlier on, most kitchens are part of a, a bigger living space now. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to create a kitchen that doesn't say necess necessarily look like a, like a fitted kitchen. It's nice to have it, you know, that it is looking like a piece of furniture, that it's something that you can live with, you can have a couch, you know, a sort of living space. And mm -hmm. your kitchen will feel like you're in a cooking space. So mm -hmm. it feels like a chicken in a social space. So the linear design, I like it. You can have your larder and your fridge at one end, so your food is all stored at one end. You can have your cooking zone maybe halfway down with your ovens um, and your hob then. And then you keep your wet area either on the main run at the back or else you put your wet area on the island unit. Okay. And yeah. That, yeah. So for me, in, when we're looking at design, I think there's three triangles in the kitchen. And like mm -hmm. I say, you've got your food storage, you've got your cooking and you've got your wet area. And those old, old areas should be intuitive. You know, you're, when you're, when you're washing up your pots and pans or your dishes, you know, they're going into the dishwasher, which is beside the sink. And yeah. then your drawer should be beside your dishwasher. So you're not running around the whole kitchen, you know, when you're in the middle of that process. Your foods, when you come in with your shopping, that you're dumping your shopping on the island unit and you're just loading it straight into, into the, the larder. Yeah, yeah. So little things like that. And that way, if you're more efficient with the storage, then your kitchen doesn't need to be quite as big. So you can get away without having loads of wall units or having two long runs of cabinetry and overfilling space. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say that to a lot of people, especially the ones where we're replacing a kitchen in an existing house where there's no extension, there's no additional space to be had. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at it very cleverly and basically use every inch of storage effectively. Mm -hmm. You'll see it. The first thing that people say to me when they're coming in to change a kitchen is, well, I found stuff that was five years old in the back of the press when I was clearing it out. Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. Dead spaces in old style yeah. kitchens. You know, what's the point in that? I reckon you probably gain 30% more storage in a kitchen by just putting in a larder press and and a few drawer units. Yeah. You know, getting yeah, yeah, yeah. rid of and getting rid of base presses. Mm -hmm. So you know, take that approach to kitchen design will help really will help loads with efficiency, you know. Yeah, no, it's brilliant, brilliant advice. And like those those uh, base cupboards that you're referring to, I mean they're a nightmare. And for anybody tall in particular, you're stooping right down. So even ergonomically they're not terrific. So the drawers make a huge difference. Absolutely huge difference. No, that that's great. And I think the larders um actually you've shared some amazing photos out. So I might just pull up some because there's lots of uh different styles from traditional to, so this one probably is one of the more traditional ones. Of course, I'm yeah. covering a bit, yeah. But it's a beautiful joinery piece in its own right, you know, so like what you were saying, like the, the kitchen is actually this beautifully crafted feature in the space, so it works brilliantly in an open plan space. Um, the the is really, when you think about it, are the oldest and simplest form of storage. Like it's, that's what yeah. you would have seen you know, kitchens back in the 30s and 50s, you know, as they started to become slightly bigger from, from, a, from a, you know, staff quarters or whatever. And um, mm -hmm. so the larger coverage, it's it's very simple, It's you mm -hmm. know, and it's a good mm -hmm. space. That That's the larder that's sitting behind me here. Sure. Oh, it's a really, it's really lovely. But what's lovely, so you, the, the door slide back, what is amazing then, so if that's in a, an open plan space then, those doors cover over and everything's concealed. So, you know, brilliant, brilliant idea for, for those kind of spaces. And actually, yeah, I might just jump in. We've had a couple of questions. I'll try and go back to the beginning. Um, yeah, somebody's saying they have a long, narrow kitchen with all the units on one wall and their dining space is a nightmare. So I'm not sure if they want, like anything you can do, I suppose it's, it's tricky with a long, narrow space. Have you had to tackle any of those? Well, so recently we've had a few of those, and if if you're lucky enough to have, say, maybe three point five or four meters of width in the room, and um, and you have the opportunity to put an island unit in, 
you can be very clever about the way you design an island use that mm -hmm. it can have storage, you can make it extra long, you can work with the height of it and also work with getting really nice stools. So we've incorporated tables onto the end of island units very, very right. effectively. Yeah, well, you're not, you have to have that disconnect between two spaces, which gains you probably about a metre or 1,200 almost mm -hmm. immediately. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a great tip. And I saw, I remember years ago seeing a really long, narrow kitchen. But what they did was they opened up the back wall. So they had a super narrow island, but then it was a bifold door. So the whole wall opened out. So, okay, on a day like today, it'd be fabulous. But I just saw very clever use, even visually, you know, even in the winter, having that wall of glazing just opened up the, the whole space. So really nice. And then a classic one I see, just a question here. Um, what's your opinion of placing a hob? on an island. We get this all the time, the harbour, the sink. What are your views Ed, on that? Well, you know, it's two years ago, I probably would have said, no, probably not as good um, because you were dealing with extraction issues. Yeah. But in the last couple of years, we've had a huge change now with, um, with downdraft hobs built into the hub. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And they've become so much more effective. Mm -hmm. And with, this, with so many houses going passive and not being able to, to have external ducting, the mm -hmm. recirculation um, filters within these hubs are incredible. So yes, yes. I think that's a really good idea. Um, you know, I, I think the, the likes of Bora and me, they seem to have really nailed it with those hubs. And mm -hmm. um, we're starting to do an awful lot more of them. It's quite nice. You don't have to have any overhead extractor that's um, that's kind of in your way or you're banging your head off. It's, it's very easy to keep clean. You know, it, the, the sink in the island is very, very popular, but there's always stuff around the sink. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's kind of kind of nearly nicer to have the hob there on the island. Induction mm -hmm. hobs are very safe. So with kids, um, you know, they're a lot safer than gas. And obviously gas hobs are very uh, tricky to keep clean. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think be more and more popular in the coming years mm -hmm. no i completely agree and if it was sink versus hob i'd always suggest now with induction and the new extraction like you're saying definitely go with the hob because it's just going to be a cleaner surface generally um so yeah no great advice and i see another just touching on our topic about the flooring um do you floor underneath kitchen units and the answer is is yes always yeah yeah definitely okay and just see any more there Jesus, uh, polished uh, concrete countertops, are they a more cost-effective alternative to quartz? Uh, I mean, I don't think so. Most of the time we've priced them up, they would work out a little bit more expensive. And um, there's, a, there, you know, there's different, different things you can do with concrete, I guess. You can form it differently if you're going for something a bit wacky on the shape. Mm. Um, and I do love the the, the poured concrete, it's it's not like a it's not like a um it's not like the builders pour, it's you know, there's there's fiber resin in it, so it's very um it's sealed quite well, it's actually quite warm to the touch. It's, it's a, there's a lovely texture to it, mm -hmm. you know, even though mm -hmm. it's, it's actually a lovely material to have, but it, I don't find them as popular as um as the quartz. The quartz is definitely the most popular finish. Sure, and would it be more? It'd be more durable, I would think, Ed, than than concrete, would it? Yeah, it's a bit yeah. stronger. It's yeah, it's not as porous. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, definitely, because I have a quartz top myself, and I find it really easy to keep, even though it's light. It's it's so easy. So, yeah, no, that that's that's great. And then the the question we kind of um, touched on it at the beginning, but just helping clients find their style. You know, the style that they like. So, what we would see a lot is that people say, "Well, I love contemporary." But then when you show them what we think is contemporary, that's not, they're terrified of it. You know, they want something a little bit more, more classic maybe. So our advice is always get out to the showroom, you know, um, take a look and see, because there's nothing like seeing it in reality. Uh, and I might just share some more of your images, but what, what, what would you advise people if, if they're, they're looking? Yeah, I, you know, yeah, exactly. I think, you know, I think people, we have a little phrase in the office here, see it like a buy it. You know, <laughs> people <laughs> yeah, exactly. think they don't know what they want. 
And then as yeah. soon as they see what they want, they're just like, that's it, you know? So yes, yeah. We're, we're so lucky in that we, we make everything ourselves. So we get to show people a lot of different imagery of different styles that we've worked on, or somebody might have added a little feature onto it and it resonates a little. So traditional style houses like we were showing there, they, they you know, most of the time, I suppose, for us, we would, people would be looking for a traditional style kitchen to go in with their period style house. Unless mm. overall architecture of the house is changing and they're just proposing the, the contemporary with the old style. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny, little things can make a difference to where, you know, if you're trying to find out from a client where they're going, it could be down to they have a table and chairs that they bought that they're keeping. And it's, it's, it's an Italian marble style, the white letter type chairs, you know, that you kind of get an insight into the type of person that they are if they can't vocalize it. Um, mm -hmm. And say when clients come down to the showrooms, you know, they'll come in, they see certain things. I suppose what we've tried to do is add a little bit of temporary twist to our handmade cabinets. So yeah. sometimes people come in thinking that a contemporary kitchen is just a flat door. Well, there's a bit yeah. more to that. You can add a little bit of character into it. You can also mix it up a little bit. It doesn't all have to sure. be the style mm -hmm. in a kitchen. Yeah. And that image that you're showing there, it's effectively, it is a real mix between a contemporary flat door kitchen and a, and a shaker. But what we've done is we've taken the shaker frame and made it a 25 mil of a frame onto a flat door and put a really nice contemporary brass tab handle on it. I love that style. I think that mm -hmm. style looks really, really cool. You know, it sits really well with the old style aga there. You can have a nice kind of nice lighting. So it's 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 a nice evolution of styles, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, it's it's really, really lovely. And I think that's just lovely for people to see that you can mix and match because I think that's that uh, people are frightened of that. You know, oh, well, if I if I want an aga, I have to go with a really traditional looking kitchen. It's not the case at all, you know. And then it can be honed and tweaked. Uh, to, to kind of reflect their personality, I suppose, which is even nicer. So, yeah, no, it's, it's great. It's really good. And I just looking at a lot of the kitchens there, there's a lot of, I suppose, darker colours. And we had one question from somebody this morning who was saying um, they're planning a kitchen renovation. They are putting it in um, a space where there's lots and lots of natural light. Very tempted to go with a dark kitchen, but worry they may have regrets. So, when it comes to the darker colours, like what, what's popular with you guys now at the moment? What are you seeing? Um, um, definitely the darker greys, the darker navies, um, and even the darker greens would be very, very popular. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The thing that I would talk to people about in terms of colour is, you know, the, the worktop surface is probably the more important colour insofar as if you go, like that image that's up there now, that kitchen, you've got a very white floor, you've got white walls, you've got high ceilings. So they really needed to bring in the dark to kind of, you know, to, you could be too bright. Mm -hmm. So the dark colors kind of help kind of, you know, tone down everything a bit. But typically, if clients in a normal space have dark cabinets, I recommend they go with a light colored worktop. Your eye, your yeah. peripheral, the vision will be drawn to the flat surface and it's going to be the thing that absorbs or bounces the light around. Yeah, yeah. That perfect one. Like, you know, that, that kitchen was so punchy, you know. Well, again, yeah. you know, really striking tile on the floor, really striking sharp color yeah. on the cabinet. But then you have the light color of walls and light color of worktop surface. Mm. And then mm. all the windows, it's such a bright space. That, that room... That you know, you'd walk into that at any time of the day and it would feel bright and airy. You know, mm -hmm. I I love. It. Yeah, no, it's great, and I think like so. The color there is is railings. Am I right? It's okay. far and ball. So that's that's a really timeless color. And I I guess I suppose my advice when it comes to color for kitchens is stick with those really rich dark shades because they're they are dark neutrals, I suppose, for want, want of a better way of describing them, um, rather than going for, you know, a blue or a pink or a, something that, yes, like I remember clients years ago who went for a red kitchen. And oh, yeah. I think five five years later, you know, I was called in to say, look, we, we, we made a mistake. But yeah, it can be really tricky. But I think, and, and that's great advice about keeping the countertop light then if you're a bit worried because that's the reflective surface. So 
Yeah, yeah really good. Things to think about with colors and um, your flooring and your worktops are the two things that you can't really change. You know, mm. it's a big deal to change them. Um, and yeah. most kitchens would be half painted anyway, so clients may change the color in five or ten years anyway. And mm. um, the walls, obviously, you can change the color. So pick, pick wisely when it comes to key features that you're not going to change. We would have seen it in years gone by where people would have gone for a funny colored agate and then they're just stuck. They're really yeah. limited to what they can do. But yeah. like, I think kitchens could be painted ten times in their lifetime. That's you great. know, and you can yeah. keep changing the colors. So, um, yeah, you know, I think your floors and worktops are the two things to look, look very mm-hmm. carefully at. Mm-hmm. And, that, you know, that's the wonderful thing about hand-painted kitchens. You know, you can, I suppose you can have a bit more fun with them because, as you say, you can just repaint them in, in a couple of years' time. I particularly love this one, Ed, the, the green, and then you've gone for everything above is lighter. That's a lovely way yeah. to introduce a colour. Um, yeah. That's really nice. I did this kitchen in... It's classic, occupies the same space as before. So it was coming in, what do we do? It's in an old traditional Victorian house, you know, mm-hmm. the, it's one of the deck and reception room in off the wall. So basically what we did in that design was we closed the door from the hallway, mm-hmm. we put the large room that you see there in the background in front of that door. So that mm-hmm. gave us two linear walls with, and, and it actually, it, it doubles the amount of worktop space immediately compared to the previous kitchen. Amazing. And, yeah. and yeah. then the island unit then in there, which was free, didn't have any, um, any, any services or sink in there. So that was great. But the big hit with that one was, um, was painting the darker color below and then leaving the top cabinets light. Mm-hmm. So I've suggested it to quite a few people over the last while. People aren't, they were a little bit wary about doing it mm-hmm. but that I was able to get that one done and photographed to show people how it, you walk into that space that space just feels massive massive and yes yeah. the people that have got into that you know clients come back to me and said to me every time a new a friend comes back to the house they're going oh my god you made the room bigger because everything is the same yeah. it just feels bigger so it's playing with that uh, playing with your colors it makes a big difference Fabulous. No, it's really beautiful. And I might, if it's okay, I'd share some of these on stories after because I'm covering up. Um, one of the details I just think is so lovely is here that you've literally, so that larger press, you've just painted across the bottom and then the top is painted. It's so lovely. Really, really clever. So, no, I think that's brilliant advice. And, and as you say, really hard for people to visualize. So being able to see it makes such a difference. It's great. Really yeah. good. Um, so then we, we touched on countertops then. What is your advice uh, for countertops if people are uh, trying to choose between marble? There, there is such a vast array of choice out there. What would you recommend? There is. I, I suppose we, we would have a preference towards quartz. Um, uh, probably, you know, in the last few years, the, the, the quartz has become much more natural looking. So therefore, mm-hmm. it looks well. I love marble. I have marble at home. Um, mm-hmm. My business owner Gary has marble at home. But marble comes with a government health warning. You know, you mm-hmm. put anything down and it could mark or it could change, discolor it. But mm-hmm. so you have to kind of, you have to know your clients. If they want it to keep stay perfect, marble's not the way to go. Mm-hmm. If you're looking for something natural that can weather and look, just take a stain or whatever, marble's brilliant. It's a beautiful material. Sure, it's used worldwide. But yeah. I think most people are just a bit, um, you know, they just want, they want it to be practical. They want it to be mm. easy. So, so the courts would be the, would be the strong favorite at the moment. Now mm. it's, it's unusual for people to use if you have the opportunity for a big open wall to put in marble as a backsplash mm. and then have a muted quartz as your worktop. So you've okay. kind of got that really nice big hit of, of uh, natural stone like some of the natural stone it, it's it's like art it's just yes. spectacular it you is indeed this. actually i see you had a lovely image i think it was one i'm sure it was natural stone now you may tell me it's quartz but was that that's probably a quartz actually perhaps that's not it yeah. Yeah. um but that's a lovely idea so essentially you, you would suggest a quartz or a marble splashback as your feature 
and then yeah. go for something complementary that's more practical on the counter surface. It's a really lovely yeah. idea, Ed. Yeah, no, that's great. And and price wise, how does marble and quartz? How do they fare? Similar or? Yeah. Well, quartz would be the more favorably priced. Now, some of the marble is, some of it's very expensive, but some of it's comparative in price to, mm -hmm. to quartz. Marble is an interesting material in that it's they literally price it as it comes out of the ground. So in the quarry, they'll, they'll, they'll take out a block and they'll cut it and they'll go, yeah, well, that's expensive. <laughs> or or that's, that's something that we can charge more for. So the quarry will yeah. take the price. Okay, um, okay. And so you can be lucky, you know, we've bought some absolutely stunning rare marbles that have been the same price as a group B quartz, you know, and then at the same time you can be looking yeah. at the stone here and there's slabs that are three times the price. Incredible. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it just depends. No, that that's that's fantastic. Brilliant. And then just from your perspective, what are anything new or innovative or things that you're loving doing for people now at the moment with kitchens? Um that you know, people might not consider that would be a good idea. And um, I, I think, think I'm not sure I'm sure. because like a lot of the stuff that we do, we've done since we started designing kitchens. Like, you yeah. know, we looked at yeah. the of drawers and larders and we've nearly always had them. Um, but I think the biggest change in the last year or two has been the likes of the, the big larder I have behind yeah. me with the yeah. doors. It's expensive. The pocket door system, we've gone through lots of different systems and there's really only one on the market that we use because it works. Mm -hmm. um, it's easy to fit, but it's, it's, it's pretty good. Like, you know, you, you, you have that whole tall bank of cabinets can be two meters or two and a half meters wide and you can have four doors that open and slide back into themselves. And it just, you know, it, it just makes, um, gives you that extra space for worktop you know, that you can hide everything away. So if you're into baking or if you're into, you know, different things like that, you can have all your machines set up in there and mm -hmm. yet you can close them away very easy, keep clean, tons of storage. So that's, mm -hmm. I think that's probably the, the biggest, biggest change or biggest extra option that you could go for. I'd say this year now we've probably done 10 full kitchens that have opted for that. Mm -hmm. Oh no, without it, it's almost add like another room. You know, you, you it's basically condensed what was that separate room in, in a house and and turned it into a cupboard, which is amazing because even someone with a modest sized kitchen can still have a version of this and transform the storage capacity. So it's it's wonderful, really wonderful. Yeah, no, great. And I love this, and I know you do too. These um, your ribbed glass is really gorgeous. Uh, I think it just works so well in the kitchen. It does, isn't it? So yeah. that's a large place as well. And, yeah. you know, one side the crockery and the other side the food. You know, if that cabinet had it just had solid doors, it would have been pretty heavy on the space. So we looked at the ribbed glass as the option. We had some lighting in there. So mm -hmm. actually, it just, it's got a lot of character to it. You nearly want to just open the door to see what is inside, don't you? So it's lovely, yeah. the extra bit of color that goes there. So yeah, it's nice. Um, I think little things like that add texture and character to to a kitchen you know? no so really really lovely options like that gorgeous and i just see a question there if you aren't painting a kitchen what do you recommend L limed or weathered oak or have you done timber kitchens Ed, where people don't want to paint a uh, kitchen yeah I think it, it's it's funny the timber kitchens uh, there's a slight change again in styles there's a lot more of the contemporary kitchens people are looking for for mm. timber and over the years, we've played around with people are trying to match flooring colors, which is quite hard to achieve when you mm -hmm. don't have, you know, that big kind of process that they, that those flooring factories have. And it also needs to kind of um, be easy to wipe down and clean. So mm -hmm. recently we found some, there's some new products on the market that we can use so that you can get that lovely white oiled or dry look but still be very well sealed so it's definitely popular like our, our older traditional kitchens would have had a lot more timber than like had a whole island unit done in in oak and it would have looked like an old work table we in the years gone by we used native irish timber for really nice feature island units but um the contemporary stuff now you'll see 
I think you're going to see a lot more wood effects or wood finishes coming into the design. So it looks quite cool. And, it, and the other thing as well is it doesn't have to be all wood. You can have mm -hmm. one top, one cabinet still in wood, your island in wood. Once again, it's nice to mix it up so you're not oversaturated with one finish. Yeah, no, I think mixing up is a lovely idea, especially where you're going with a statement, you know, like a beautiful timber finish or something. So really nice to mix it up. I agree. Um, and then the the whole idea of the island, like it, it, it's funny, last year with all the, the projects we did, I think it was 98% of people wanted an island. That was yeah. on the wish list, regardless of, of the size of the kitchen. It was just desperate. <laughs> they had to have an island. Yeah. Have you ever done kitchens where an island just isn't, appropriate where it isn't going to work what are your thoughts on that if there's not and, and you have to still fit one in or, or no and you've you've managed you've managed a, a solution around it that 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 still works um so i guess in like it, it's it's kind of changed a lot back in the good old days everybody wanted the kitchen table right smack bang in the middle and now everybody wants the island unit there and mm. um, i think in most cases, there's ways of doing it. So back to the linear kitchen, if, you, if you're clever about how you do it, so turning corners, in my opinion, is it costs you space. And yes, it, yeah. It can, it can actually upset the whole flow of the kitchen. So we would always try to do a straight line. So mm -hmm. if you do that, um, you have a lot more opportunity to get the island unit in. But we have done a couple of peninsular type island units Mm -hmm. um, and once again, you end up with a, you put a tall bank of cabinets at the back run and instead of turning, which people typically would, and maybe mm -hmm. putting a sink under the window and then turning back again and having a small peninsula, what we'd suggest mm -hmm. is just a tall bank at the back, parallel mm -hmm. to that you have your island units connected to one wall. Yeah. So it's a peninsula, but it, it's open at one end, but it's a full size island unit. So instead of just having circulation the whole way around, you just have it on one side. On one side, yeah. And it actually works very well because as soon as you turn your corner, you've got mm. 600 mil of cabinetry, then you've mm. got one meter to the next surface away from it. So you're losing 1.6 meters immediately just to yeah. turn a corner. If you're going yeah. to have an orbit. So yeah. keep everything straight and yeah. then attach your, your island unit to the wall and bring it out and you'll probably you know, in a typical size kitchen, so I'm working on one at the moment, and the back run is 12, it's 36, it's 3.8 meters long. So tall bank, 3.8 meters long, mm -hmm. and then with the peninsula island unit coming off, which is going to work out at about 2.6 meters long. So that's, that, that's, that's a big great. island unit. Yeah, it's fun. well, I'll share one that we did actually, Ed, which is very similar. Now you can't see the side, but that's exactly it. So. There just wasn't enough space to put an island, but it's exactly that. It's a run at the back and then you've got, that's actually a peninsula. So it does work really well and, and gives way more flexibility because we did get a question there um, beforehand about tips for dealing with corner corner units and they are notoriously tricky to deal with really, aren't they? Yeah. It actually, it's, it's counterproductive in my mind. You just lose space. You're better off to just not turn the corner and disconnect it, you'll find that you actually get more effective space. Like sometimes yeah. people are trying to use a void in the corner and you're trying to use the man's corner, but you're but what you're doing is you're taking away the potential to use um, a big larder press in that corner or or a drawer pack on the return side. So avoid turning corners if at all possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I would agree definitely. And then just a question here, any pros or cons for putting the island on legs off the ground, not with wheels, they're saying. Um, so interestingly enough, back, you know, with the, the older traditional style kitchens, it was quite popular to have them as a work mm -hmm. table style on legs. Um, and then there's now, we've got a couple of designs going in where we, we're doing a really slim metal frame Mm -hmm. And it's open on the gates, and then you have your cabinetry sitting in flush. So it, it is effectively a very contemporary version of the old work table. Mm -hmm. The big thing is, is stuff and dirt going in underneath all of that. Yes. What we would do is we would set back in a recessed kicker, maybe right. about 200 mil, um, and paint it black. 
So it looks like it's a, it looks like it's floating. It looks like it's on legs, but it has the recess kicker and it just stops. It, you would be amazed what you'll find underneath an island unit that has, is I, open. All the <laughs> I can imagine, crazy. especially if you've got kids, little ones, and God yeah. knows what would go underneath. Yeah, no, no, no. But that's a great tip. So it would just appear to be floating, but or it's above the ground. But yeah, you're you're stopping all of that happening. Now that's fantastic. Yeah. And Ed, there was another question earlier on about lighting, your advice for um, lighting in a kitchen, under cabinet, things like that. I know you guys, there's a lot of wall lights in, in the, the kitchens that you do. Yeah, I like, I like lighting. I, I think lighting is, is under considered, I think, in a lot of kitchens by, by, um, by a lot of people. So you've got to have task lighting, obviously. And then, and then I think it's important to have atmospheric lighting. So for us, task yeah. lighting is your down lighters in your walkway spaces. Now, mm -hmm. because a lot of our designs don't have that many wall units anymore, then you need to have task lighting on the counter. Right, so that's yeah. the idea of the wall lights, is that you're bringing in lighting that is going to be down on your work surfaces, but it's also going to be decorative, and it's also going to be atmospheric. Because you really want to be able... When you're having dinner in your open plan house, to turn off the down lighters in the kitchen because you're finished work, you don't need all that light, but leave on a couple of your wall lights or your inside your glazed wall you see the lighting on. And then the kitchen is a lovely atmosphere or ambience in the kitchen area without it being overlit then at that stage. So mm -hmm. I do think it's really important to look at the lighting in the kitchen. You know, the worktops or the work surfaces like the larder presses, we have lighting that's inside those. Yeah. They come on automatically when you open the doors. So there's a nice bright space, you know, mm -hmm. and like, you know, look at that kitchen there. Like, that's so cool. The lighting in that are, you know, they're an integral part of the design. It turns mm -hmm. it from being a lovely kitchen into a nice kind of cafe style. You know, yeah. you've got those French style lights. So lighting is just it's so important it adds such a dynamic and you can destroy a kitchen i you know i remember okay. walking into a project about 10 years ago and the client bought these lights and they were horrendous and they were over the <laughs> i really wanted to photograph the kitchen and i couldn't i was like i can't photograph it like, oh, no. so yeah <laughs> yeah 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 no no it's a, they are definitely a statement really important no, that's great. Great. And um, actually, there's a brilliant question here. I see if you're putting a kitchen into an original room in a period house with 11 foot ceilings, how high do you go with the units? It's a great, yeah, great question. And I think um, without picking a height specifically, but mm. our, all of our cabinets are all standard. So we have the luxury of deciding what height it goes. So yeah. like that, with that yeah. room there, the ceilings were, they were... Uh, 12 foot, so big 12 and a half foot high. So we went with three meter high cabinets in that in that kitchen. Okay, it's proportionately right for the space we felt. You know, mm -hmm. if we have um, if you look the the counter mounted units with the glass, the top box cabinet on that. If we had have taken that top box cabinet off, it would have been at around about um at about one point or sorry, about 2.2 .2 meters high, right? Which mm -hmm. would have been open from standard cabinet height. It, the amount of times they've gone into traditional houses where they've gone with standard wall units and it just looks, it's just like half of the kitchen is missing. So mm -hmm. you do need to work with the height. I don't think it would be right to go all the way to the ceiling in there. I think it would be top heavy. So yeah. I think the portions are important in the space. No, no, it's lovely. And lovely the way the top detail picks up the lovely cornicing in the room as well. So really important to let those features uh, stand out as well. And do you know what was interesting with that kitchen as well? Um, it's hard to see in that image, but there was a chimney breast behind the canopy. Mm -hmm. And in okay. the previous you know, it was built around chimney breast and the, and the cabinets were set back in at the end. Whereas mm -hmm. with this one, what we decided to do was actually to flatten out the alcove. The alcoves are only about 200 mil deep. So we flattened mm -hmm. them out. Yeah. And you get you got a straight run then of cabinets. So it actually actually worked better, you know, because previously there was a step out in the middle there. So having mm -hmm. it all, even though you were kind of arguably taking a bit of space from the kitchen, it mm -hmm. kind of actually helped the kitchen at the end of the day. No, it's beautiful. Really lovely, Ed. 
And then I'm just so conscious I've taken up so much of your time and thank you for everything. But just we've had a couple of questions about floors and I see a lot of different kind of floor finishes in your kitchen. Somebody asked me about timber floors and it's one we get all the time. What are your mm -hmm. thoughts on timber floors in, in a kitchen? Prepare for, for uh, <laughs> to maintain them. And yeah. timber is beautiful as underfoot. It's, it looks gorgeous, but it does require maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, I think you'd be probably five years. Would you get five years out of a good timber floor without, without having to sand and re-varnish it? You know, yeah. you know, it's particularly around the sink and the wet areas. And then if, God forbid, anything leaked or there was, you know, it, it, you just... It could be heartbreaking, particularly like some of the floors are so expensive. So my preference is always tiles. I think tiles are just so practical. You put them down, you don't really have to worry about them. Um, yeah. And I thought you'd see in some of our images in the kind of, um, it would have worked in that kitchen as well. Like that, having a tile pattern or a tile section just in the work, high work area, that's, yeah. that's, a, that's a great idea. That works really well. Exactly, you know, and you can do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, where it's just part of it, and then you can have your timber elsewhere, and it works really, really well. Um, and just somebody had asked about um, cost-effective solutions for flooring. So I guess you know, if you're looking very budget, there are amazing laminates out there at the mm -hmm. moment, and they come in a range of colours. And then there's a lot of very reasonably priced uh, tiles, porcelain tiles, and things to look at. So plenty of mm -hmm. options there. Brilliant. Well, Ed, thank you so much. That has been amazing. Um, I've learned a few things, which is wonderful. And I hope everybody's gotten loads from that and really appreciate your time this morning. So thank you so much. Thank you. Delighted um, to be on, on, on with you this morning. And yeah, it's a great show. But, um, all, of the, all of the ones that you do are really, really good, really informative. So fair play to you from the effort in. You, you do a lot of hard work on that end. So it's very, very good of you. Thanks, Ed. Thanks so much. Well, listen, have a great weekend. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And same to everybody else. Hope you all enjoyed it this morning. Thanks a million. Thanks, Bye, Ed. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.